Hey guys, today we're going to talk about hypothesis statements. Now hypothesis is going to reflect a general problem that we're looking at. So for our class, um, you're actually going to have a variety of hypothesis statements. So really what we're doing is we're taking a general problem and we're making it precise enough to allow testing. So the most important piece of hypothesis statements is to be specific. Okay, so we've got three kinds of hypothesis statements that we're going to look at today. The first kind is a null hypothesis statement. So a null hypothesis statement um, basically states that there's no relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable that you're looking at. So when you write a null hypothesis statement, you're going to use words like equals, or no relationship, or no difference. So these three phases um, are going to be what you use whenever you write your null hypothesis statement. So your null hypothesis statement could say something like, um, there is no difference between students who take notes via paper and students who take notes on their laptop. So again, the key phrase there is no difference, which is here. You can also say um, students who take notes on paper and students who take notes via a laptop have equal test scores. Those are both examples of a null hypothesis statement. Okay? Now a null hypothesis statement is really important for your research. So what we're doing is we're basically creating a starting point for analysis. Okay? It's our benchmark for comparison. So when we look at our research, we're going to assume the null hypothesis is true. And this is backwards from what we tend to think of when we think of research. So we're assuming the null is true because we don't have any other information available to us yet. So this is the very front of the research process. Okay? So again, we're going to provide a benchmark for comparisons whenever we actually do do our research. Okay? Second kind of hypothesis that we're going to have is a research hypothesis statement. Okay? So the null assumes equality. The research hypothesis assumes inequality. Okay, so we're going to say a relationship exists between the independent and dependent variables. Now we actually have two different kinds of research hypothesis statements that we're going to talk about today. Okay? A non-directional this is going to basically state the opposite of our null hypothesis statement. We're stating the groups are different, but we're not specifying how. So we're using phrases like not equal, okay? Now the directional we're stating the groups are different and we're also stating a direction. So with the directional hypothesis statements, you're going to use words like more than or less than, or greater than, okay? So the groups are different, we're stating how they're different with the directional. With the non-directional, we're simply stating the groups are different, okay? So the purpose of this, we're assuming the null is true, now this is what we're testing whenever we use um, the scientific method in psychology. Whenever we go through our research process, these are what we're testing, the directional and non-directional research hypothesis statements. We're going to take the, re the research and we're going to take these statements and compare them against the null hypothesis at the end of our research. Okay, so what makes a good hypothesis statement? Hypothesis statements can be very, very simple um, or they can be very complicated. Um, I like them to be simple, 
So basic um, hypothesis statements include five things. One, you're going to state it in a declarative form. This means it's going to be a sentence, not a question. It's going to end with a period. Okay? You're going to state some kind of relationship between variables. In this case, we've got not equal. We've got greater than, less than. Um, in the case of our null hypothesis, we're saying the groups are equal. Now, the third is a lot of work. It's basically going to state, um, it's going to reflect some kind of theory or some kind of literature that you have a background in. Um, it's brief and to the point. I like hypothesis statements that are no more than one or two sentences. It really shouldn't be more than one sentence. Um, very, very short. Again, going back to the example I gave earlier, um, students who take notes on paper are different in terms of scores on exams than students who take notes via laptops. Okay, that's kind of a long sentence, but it's still only one sentence. It's brief. It's to the point. I know I've got two groups, students who take tests or take notes on paper, students who take notes via laptop, and I know I'm testing them via exams. Okay? And then the last point is testable. How are you going to test your hypothesis statement? How are you going to test that dependent variable? Very, very important to make clear in your hypothesis statements. Okay? Here's some examples for you to look through um, of, for some of these hypothesis statements. Um, just some examples about um, classroom behavior, test-taking skills, um, looking at some kind of drug abuse, adult care, a variety of examples for you to look at when it comes to research hypothesis statements. Um, I think you guys will have a little more issues with the research hypothesis statements because there's two of them than with the null hypothesis statement. Okay? So that wraps up this video on um, hypothesis statements. If you have any questions, please email me.